What's up? Yo, it's EOM here with another beat making video. This time I'm doing it with the machine and only the machine. It's pretty much a video showing y'all how I chop this sample on these drums. Uh, if y'all can guess the sample, then y'all are just on some other telepathic stuff because this is like, it must mean you're very old or you watch a lot of old movies. Real sad. So, um, there's different ways to, to chop it. Just, you can do the detect mode, the split mode, the grid mode. What I usually do is I just play it by ear. Like right now, all I'm doing is just constantly pressing the one pad, the pad, pad number one. I'm just constantly pressing it, then I'll do the same thing with the second pad, same thing with the third pad, and I'll just use my ear until I hear like when the next part happens. So you can hear it right now. So it's, it's pretty much like finding the transients. If you guys use uh, Ableton, it kind of finds the transients for you sometimes. But sometimes you got to chop it yourself. This is exactly the same thing, except you got knobs and you can you have a little more control of where. You, you can be a little more uh, precise. But you can do the same thing in Ableton, but I don't know if you can do it with knobs or anything. You got to pretty much use the mouse. There may be a MIDI controller you can do the same thing with. If you can, then that would be awesome. I would love that. But machine works fine now. It wasn't working for a while, but y'all can see I got the new update with the colors. The new colors in the jump. Uh, one thing I will say is make sure your polyphony is on one. If you're chopping samples, you can do whatever you want. But I make sure my polyphony is on one. And I always like to use the vintage mode and the SP1200 uh, engine. There really isn't no reason for me to do that, but I just like it because I just assume that it makes my beat sound way better. Yeah, I want to apologize too. My bad I got no video of uh, my fingers doing the stuff on the machine. I need a separate camera. So uh, I'm investing in that, about to get that T3. The Rebel Edition or whatever that, I don't know what it's called, but I, I don't even need that. I could just get like a flip cam, but you know, I just need something to make these videos a little more like so you can see exactly what I'm doing and not just the screen, but this will do for now. So here's what I got. Press the apply button. Now you got all the chops. Delete all the chops because you don't want them the way they put them in there. They always put it in there to fit. And I'll just play it out. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Hey, shiver me timbers. Uh -huh. Yeah, what's cold in December? Uh -huh. Don't you remember? Uh, I'll be back in November. Uh, yeah, you know, so I just want to say, you know, you can pick any tempo you want to. I just picked 94 because I usually make beats around that tempo. I, I kind of know what tempo I like. I used to do like 90s and that after a while that just sounds real slow. 
So I started picking up around 95, 99, get a little more bounce, a little more, you know, energy. So here are the drums. Y'all know these drums. Classic drums, and all gentlemen. for educational purposes. That's where I say, you know, make sure your polyphony, put your polyphony on one, because you put it on any other number, it's just going to keep on repeating itself. Now it gets annoying fast. Ladies and gentlemen. You know, you put the polyphony on one, it cuts itself off no matter what you press. I put the compressor on it so, you know, I don't know if you saw the levels, Ladies but it was red. It was hitting the red, so, you know, I want to, you know, keep everything uniform. So you can do the grid mode, which is usually easier gentlemen. with the drums. Use it with the drums, and it's mad easy, because the 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 uh, transients are like mad apparent, as you can see right here. It's real easy to tell them apart, or for the computer to tell them apart. And you can go and edit it further to get the ones it missed. I just answer this question real quick. Uh, there was another question. The first question was about samples. How like how I would chop a sample. This one was how I would make a drum pattern. And the, the really only thing you can do is just listen to drummers. Listen to drummers. Listen and listen to your favorite producers. And just after a while, you just start picking up, you know, certain patterns. Like there is no. The, the thing about coming up with cool patterns is that no one's ever come up with them before like all the classic ones no one's d did that before whoever did this like this is this pattern is classic because no one did it before this dude this drummer so that's why you just gotta come up with a funky one make sure it has a a groove so people can get into a groove like i don't even know how to explain it it's just that's something you're trying to pick up and you usually pick it up by listening to a lot of drummers trying to get like accents the accents that they do timing making the sound humanized yeah that's something you just gonna have to you know that's like a thing you got to train yourself on with your ear and all that there really is no right or wrong way there's a terrible way but there's no like the best way you know what i mean the best way would just be to learn to play drums you learn to play drums, you'll be straight. Learn to beatbox, you'll be straight. That's what helped me out. So right now I just like chopped it up myself instead of using the grid mode. I didn't want to chop the whole sample because you know save time. So I'm gonna just try to make up a new pattern with these drums. Never want the original pattern that they, they use. Make it original. Make it your own. Like, but um, so what uh, what you would usually do, or at least for me, I know that sometimes my my timing can be a bit sloppy, or the way I like my computer may pick up the the um, the timing that I hit the pads. It may be different from when I actually did in real life. So, a thing I usually do is on a one, two, three, four, then a two, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. I usually just lock those in. Sometimes if I get it right, if I get it right on, on point or close to it, the first time I'll leave it alone. But if that very first note is off, in my opinion, it makes everything else sound off. I'm back, y'all. I just ripped out the cord of my headphones. But yeah, I just do the... I just made sure to, the, this part right here. Like that metronome part, that's where I would make sure that shit is just on point. But it can be off, but, you know, it makes it more humanized if it's off, but everything in between is off, so it makes it still sound kind of humanized. And that's it, y'all. That's how you would chop up sample in the drums, y'all. 
Do your thing. Peace.